I love that we, you know, we're bringing in a keynote that's not physical therapist. I think the outside perspective from other professionals is so important. I think sometimes we don't know what we don't know because we talk to PTs, we engage with PTs, we, you know, we collaborate, we do research. And, and I think it's really cool to have someone, you know, who's, who's not a PT provide their perspective and their experiences. Hello, Megan. Hello, Amy. How are y'all doing today? Good, Derek. Thanks for having us. Yes, Absolutely. Great. Well, you're having me too. So just so we're, we're clear, this is a triple hosted event with no guests. We're all just guests <laughs> and hosts. So, um, but Megan, I know that you know you're our you're our AOMP president, and I think it's really cool that you've taken on the opportunity to also be a part of this and really, you know, be in part of branding and things. So if you, maybe you can give your introduction first and Amy, you can go as well with, you know, being an executive board member um, and also being one of the hosts here. So Megan, I'm going to kick it back to you because I got to stop talking. All right. Well, I'll, I'll take it for now. So Megan Donaldson and I'm president of AOMP. Um, I'm also a department chair at Medical University of South Carolina. And so I've been a part of PT education for quite some time, still a clinician doing mostly pro bono work. Um, and uh, obviously I'm a mom of two kids and staying pretty active with all the things that they do. So um, when I got asked to do this, we absolutely had to say yes, because uh, manual therapy is part of the passion that we've had for so many years, obviously serves the organization really well. And uh, I'm excited to talk a little bit about it and maybe why this is so important for us to do this uh, adventure together. So um, that's a little bit about me. Amy, how about you? All right. All right. Uh, so Amy McDevitt, I am a member at large. So I'm on the executive um, committee also at AMT, which is a great position. I, I get to um, kind of represent membership and what's happening there. I also get to be involved in bylaw changes, which is really exciting. <laughs> we, we always hope that we don't have more than a handful every every year, but um, you never know what's coming down the pike. So um, I am an associate professor at University of Colorado. So I'm in a teaching position. Clinically, I work in an outpatient clinic at the University of Colorado Health. So I dabble in the, the clinical world. And then I also do some clinical research. So I get to wear that hat too. And I'm really excited to be here because I, I think part of what we've decided to do is, you know, interview all sorts of people that historically have been part of the organization or maybe are new and are really change makers in the organization. And we want to be able to cover, you know, a whole plethora of topics that we think are going to be interesting to the listeners. Absolutely. And I even think this next piece, which is Derek uh, being conference chair, needs to talk a little bit about maybe why he's interested in participating in this and how a conference could benefit. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just give my quick introduction as well. I'm an assistant professor at Duke University in the Doctor of Physical Therapy Division. I've been a physical therapist for, you know how when you um, select how long you've been a member of the organization, I think, you know, it starts out like zero to two years, two to five years, six to 15 or six to 10 and then 11 to 15. And then there's like this, I, I think there's a 20 and up category and it's just for like just the rest of everybody else. I think I'm in that category now. So, <laughs> um, but I've been a PT for a while, uh, but I've been in academia for eight years. Uh, I do serve a little bit of clinical practice uh, specifically with mentoring. And I had the opportunity to mentor some manual therapy fellows, especially in this last year with our program. And so that's part of what I do professionally. And then within the organization, yes, I am the conference chair. I was previously on the executive board as well um, in Amy's role, which I don't think we had as many bylaw changes until Amy came on. Um, but, <laughs> so <her>. but <laughs> in the conference chair role. And yeah, really excited about this because I think, you know, this brings us another opportunity to highlight things that go on at conference that go on before conference that go on after conference it lets people continue to live in the world that you know if anybody's been to one of our conferences really i think that's where they start to get energized and rejuvenated about what we're doing in terms of our professional career and our goals and such and when we have a, something like this and as amy said where we can bring in guests, you know, people who are sort of legends and lores of the profession, but then also bringing in those that are those new and upcoming talents and highlighting people. I think this is a really cool opportunity. It's been a, a while that we, I think we need to take this, um, uh, take on this challenge and looking forward to it. 
Yeah, and Derek, yeah. you've done a great job in bringing so much energy to conference. I mean, and I'll just say I was in that formal role, but you take it to a whole nother level. So this is great to have you here and doing this and taking what we bring to a conference just to a different medium, right? Like it's to reach audiences that it's not just a single week. Um, it extends over time. They can hit us pretty much any uh you know, day of the week, if once we get to full scale, this will be yeah. great for those audience members. And, and to me, this is part of our strategic plan. We absolutely want to engage with our membership and, and I don't give them something back. I mean, obviously they've been members for a long time, but we also want to make sure that they can feel like there's resources that they can plug into and, and know that we have those resources, that we're building those resources. So that's a goal I know that as a board, we've put this forward to do, and this was one of the mediums that we wanted to do it. So we appreciate you and and Duke and, and Chad Cook for allowing us to kind of have this opportunity to transition with CMET's, uh, you know, hands off um, hands, hands on, hands off podcast so we can get this to uh, our audience as well. Yeah, and I think it aligns really well with um, AUMT and the strategic plan that we have. And it's nice to see this um, a little bit more formalized connection between the two endeavors. Well, not with the endeavor and then with the association. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, the mission for the Centers for Excellence in Manual Manipulative Therapy is to provide, I think it's really this balanced and honest, credible information about manual therapy. And what better avenue to do that than to have a podcast that brings in people who are, you know, can can speak to sort of both sides of the aisle really nicely. So I look forward to bringing in some of those guests. That's kind of what we've tried to do with some of the conference programming as well. Yeah. And I, I like how we've kind of decided as a group here to engage you know, people on topics that aren't just maybe specific to manual therapy research, but I love that we're thinking about um, clinicians and bringing in clinicians that have ideas related to the topic. We've talked about maybe bringing in some people who have some expertise in education, um, because I think a lot of us wear different hats, whether we're clinicians and educating students or residents or fellows, you know, we can always glean more um, you know, insight and information from from people that are coming in talking to us about how to be better educators. So um, I like the the kind of draft lineup that we have that we're not going to disclose just quite yet. But I, I think we have some good ideas about the types of people that we're going to bring in to share ideas with us. Yeah, Amy, I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's nice for the um, probably the majority of our membership is not researchers and educators. Right, the mm -hmm. majority of our membership is clinicians. And I think making sure that we always have some sort of focus within that. And I, I think having a, a chance to bring in clinicians, one thing I actually have always thought that AOM has done really well, that, you know, we have high level researchers, at, you know, some of the highest level of, of research funding that are part of our um, membership. But we also have very impactful, well-known clinicians who, you know, many of our um, members have learned from. And, and when you think about who we are with the fellowship training, it truly is a clinical fellowship. And so mm -hmm. I agree, Amy, I think having, you know, making sure that when we bring in guests that we're always considering, um, you know, that part of it as well, not necessarily translating all these evidence from the researcher, but also bringing in the clinician who is, um, you know, using some of that yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And we all started there, you know, that's uh, for all of us, those were our roots. And so um, I think it's great to try to give clinicians some, some palatable information to take back to the clinic, you know, whether they practice just clinically or whether they educate in the clinic. And I, I still think what's neat is bringing in people to talk about education. It's not just necessarily education of, of peers and colleagues, but education of patients too. And so you know, I, I think there's a lot of different avenues that we are willing to take with us um, in order to just bring in a diversity of, of speakers to, to give us a diversity of information. And Amy, I love the fact that we even went outside of the U.S., right? Like our goal as an organization, which is a member organization of IFOM, is for us to have that international flavor and, and perspective at times. I think it makes us better. And so for us to look at speakers and really be mindful about who can we pull from the U.S. and who can we pull from outside, because yeah. this medium allows that rich engagement. And it's not about, oh, can you make the week work? Can you travel? Can you, you know, leave your family? Because, I mean, let's be honest, if we're really looking at how do we do this? 
place where we can engage with each other, it has to fit in our life. And so yeah. we're trying to find ways to do that, whether you're a mom, a dad, or whatever. Um, you know, you got to make sure that we can fit in the life. And so really, this is a great medium for us to be able to line up amazing speakers with some flexibility, right, that bring that right. international flavor, experience, expertise. Um, and to me, this is a priority because it helps our, our professional development of all of our, our members. Um, and so obviously, carrying kind of that international feel with a little bit of a hometown grown feel uh, by having some of the, uh, the locals that they know of AOMP doing some of the facilitating. And Megan, I want to say I really appreciate the fact that you're putting yourself out there as the person who's going to interview the international speakers at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I think your commitment is is just unbelievable. I really appreciate oh, the fact that you put that out there, you know, to to be the the front runner in in uh, doing those late night interviews. I don't know, though, Amy, you know, I'm just not sure. Yeah, isn't isn't Amy our international traveler? I mean, like I really <laughs> feel right. like. I should give this up. I mean, like, you know, I feel like this is really your space, Amy. And I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm excited to just, you know, watch you grow in that platform. So, Thanks, I, you know, you. feel free to take those early morning calls. <laughs> well, mountain, mountain time is probably the most flexible time. But I right? agree, like, yeah. you know, the international stuff. But you could also do, like, the early morning instead of the late evening for the, the mm -hmm. those recordings. But mm -hmm. speaking of international, I just – because I know our, I, and I don't know, <laughs> so for our listeners out there right now, which right now we currently have none because this is our very first recording. So <laughs> we're just saying this at this moment. But hopefully as we do this launch, this out, we will actually have um, listeners and we'll see when this on actually gets pushed out there. But when we're, we're recording this right now on June 17th, is that right? I think it is mm -hmm. June 17th. It is. And um, I would imagine that this will get published um after the big event that's coming up in early July. And Megan, you spoke to this just a couple minutes ago about the international presence and the international, um, you know, a, appreciation that we have. Um, so, you know, what, are, what are, besides the, uh, the Taylor Swift concert that I think you may be uh, going right, to or right. not, um, what, what else are you excited about this uh, IFOM um, expedition that we're going to be headed out to? And, and I think maybe your first IFOM, right? Yeah, this is my first iPhone. So I'm just timing of the other ones. So I was never able to make it. So I'm really excited about this. So, um, you know, I think what's, so let's put, let's put it into context. So similar to AOM, right? It's multiple days. There's some early sessions, like there's some optional things to join into, and then they do a little bit of a celebration. So that's all really similar. Um, there's a teaching um, seminar. So again, for those who are kind of in the education space, mentors, um, maybe serving other fellows, right? Those are opportunities to plug into those other who are doing that across the world. Um, so that's really kind of cool. Um, there's rich conferencing. I mean, again, I think the biggest thing for me is this is a networking event internationally. Um, so what the expectations are, I, I, I think it can be as, as much as you want or as little as you want. It just depends on how much you want to engage in those things. So um, to me, this is a space that we're taking our board um, and we're ready to go and meet and talk with people and really figure out best ways. So we can work together and, and leverage manual therapy on this platform internationally so that people really do get a sense of what this is and, and kind of, again, going back to what CMET was there to do, it's, it's to remove the misnomers. It's the, the, the misinformation that has been out there. Um, we need to talk about this as a great viable option. And, you know, I think the pendulum sh uh, swings pretty good, especially in orthopedics and PT specifically, but within orthopedics, right, we've kind of gone to this exercise, pain science, and we've kind of forgotten a little bit about the benefit of manual therapy or it's been criticized. So this is a really nice place because the U.S. has stand pretty firm and we still believe in those supports and the multimodal approach. So to be able to go out there, um, you know, when I say out there, I'm saying Switzerland. Uh, we're going to Switzerland and we're going to have these conversations and with researchers and speakers. And um, yeah, I can't I really couldn't be more excited for what we get to do. 
So Megan, aren't you excited that we're going with Amy though? Because I actually feel like Amy's are, are going to be our traveling mom. Because I have absolutely <laughs> no freaking idea what to do. In terms of I've been to Jamaica and I've been to Canada. And when I say Canada, I've been to Beaver Creek, Yukon, Yukon territory. So not just like Toronto. Like I truly have been in Canada, but that's it. Like that's my yeah. international traveling, right? So I, I'm super happy to have Amy. Amy, advice for us, like, you know, mm-hmm. make sure like, you know, we don't do anything stupid and, you know, or what. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be your guide. I, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I love traveling internationally and here we go again. I just got back from an international trip and I'm, I actually just left the suitcase open and pulled out the essentials because I'm packing it back up again in a week. <laughs> so, but um, it'll be great. And I'm, I went to the iPhone conference in Glasgow, which was, were you there, Derek? In, in no, Glasgow, but I was Scotland. looking at that. Wasn't that like seven years ago, eight years ago eight, now? Because eight, we had a COVID, yeah, eight, COVID break. Yeah, I can't remember the exact year, but it was it was really interesting. I think one of the things I enjoy about it, and hopefully we can bring some of this back to the podcast, is just learning about what's happening in other countries, what's current, what's contemporary. And, and also what I think is important is learning how to kind of cater to different populations of people. So we'll be privy to presentations from people representing countries all over the world. And it's just really fascinating to hear how manual therapy is slightly different or they're, they're, it's modified um, and what ideas come from not just researchers, but clinicians in other countries. And so I'm excited to bring some of that back. And, you know, maybe there's some speakers that we're, um, you know, lucky enough to, to hear at IFOND that we can think about bringing to the podcast. So I think we're also there on a little bit of a fact-finding mission to bring some really cool information back to our, our membership and, and our listeners. So I'm excited about that too. So it's not just back finding. I can speak specifically, <laughs> we are getting mics yeah. and Derek and I have to figure out how to use these mics and we are going to go navigate wherever we are to go and have live conversations and bring it back. So like, well, yeah. we're going all in in this. Yeah, we're all okay. in. I, I gotta, I hope I don't get in the security lines and, and customs and they think that I'm some spy. Um, I, if you don't see me ever again, somebody thought I was a spy. And so obviously with my mics or whatever else is be in my bag. But Amy, we're not on a fact finding. We're going to find them and All we're right. going to interview them. <laughs> Real live so it's, time. It's an implementation. It's an implementation trip. <laughs> That's right. That's they, are the, they are a little creepy mics. I think they're a little like fuzzy feathered mics that we're supposed to wear on our shirts. And I think like talk to them people and get information so a spy. <laughs> a <bit> like a spy <laughs> so <laughs> Derek what, <laughs> what are some of the Derek and Megan what are some of the um ideas that we want to share with listeners about some of the speakers that we might be bringing forward in this the next part of 2024 do we want to do you want to do we want to talk about any like categories of things yeah. we're going to be talking about or Maybe what are some of our goals to, you know, in, in terms of engaging with different speakers? I know we talked a little bit about that already, but what do we want to share with people without, um, you know, totally spoiling, spoiling it? Well, I'll give big categories, kind of like the big overarching thing. Yeah. So like in our in our strategic plan, right, we have key enablers that kind of make everything work that we do. Um, and when we think about that, it's leadership, it's education, and it's advocacy. And I would almost suggest, you know, the research piece in that kind of transcends, it kind of goes across multiple, like it could be an educational piece, right? Just how to clinical pearls and those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but really those are the three big overarching aims. Like, right, we're trying to lead and grow as an organization and, and be the front leader. Um, in order to do that, we have to have enriched membership that just really feel connected. And, and with these speakers, we feel that that will happen. Um, you know, from an other perspective, it's just the education side. I mean, I think we have great topics, right? Pertinent yeah. topics about manual therapy, integrating manual therapy across, you know, multiple populations, whether I, I even saw some of the lists, like we were thinking about, do we bring some pelvic health in here, women's health, right? So some of those pieces and topics would have a really nice platform, which is just contemporary practice. And then the last is advocacy. And, and I have to say, guys, the more I'm at the main level of leadership and interfacing both nationally and internationally, 
we have to be an advocate for the science and the practice of manual therapy. Yeah. We have yeah. to. And yeah. this is the platform that it has to be at because not just on our conference, which is these, you know, days together and we feel so good because we're all together and it's a little bit kumbaya to be honest, right? It's our family, yeah. but it's when we leave each other, how do we keep the synergy and how do we keep advancing the profession? And, you know, Twitter's got a place. All the other social media things have a place, but how do we stay connected where we can follow thought leaders more than in a snippet that can be misinterpreted, right? I mean, more than something, this is a great, a great forum for that. So we've aligned some of those speakers on those categories. Um, and so mm-hmm. I, I'm excited about that. I love that. Yeah. And you know, to, to jump in there, I'm, <clears throat> I'm also excited that, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but you know, a lot of this, Megan, Amy and I, at least I, I'll speak for, for me I don't know a whole lot about podcasting. I've, I've, we launched the Hands On Hands Off podcast, and I think we've done an okay job with that. Um, but we have brought in um, Jimmy McKay and his team to help us with this, and I think that that is what I am most excited about because I think he's going to really supercharge what we're going to do and really help us bring something that's you know um, a little bit. Um, um, more exciting, a little bit different. And actually, before we even got on and started recording this show, we were having all kinds of fun playing around with the StreamYard thing <laughs> that we're working with. And I think that's all part of the the fun of, of, of us learning how to better engage and interact with some of these people that we're going to be bringing on, because I'm sure that we've all heard podcasts. It doesn't matter how great the guests can be. If we're not doing a good job of engaging that individual, then it may not um, be pertinent to the listener. So I think that's going to be a fun and exciting thing. And just, you know, your question about like what kinds of topics and things that we're going to be bringing in. I mean, I'm just looking down some of the the lineups here, you know, just talking about um, everything from, you know, careers in manual therapy um, uh, to Megan's point, some of the more interesting things of where manual therapy can be put into manual therapy in sports, manual therapy in pediatrics, other sorts of uh, um, approaches, and then, you know, myth busting and all kinds of fun things that I think we'll be able to do. And, you know, from there, I, you know, selecting the right guest for that. But then I also think too, we'll also have guests who will probably let us, evolve a little bit of what we're talking about in addition yeah. to that. That's one of the things that we did at um, the Centers for Excellence in Manual Manipulative Therapy. And I, I don't think it worked as well as it's going to, because I think we're going to get some good advice on from Jimmy, but having some themes, but obviously we need to have, you know, some big, some big stars. We're going to have a lot of heavy hitters. And I think, you know, with the international opportunities and all of the international people that Amy will interview at 2 a.m., um, we'll have some really good, some really good guests as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love the platform with that because if you know Jimmy, which right, he's got that just that personality and that kind of get to know you person type. And I love that about him. And I think that's really nice about this platform too, is that we can get to know each other a little bit differently. Just, you know, what what about them makes them a little more unique, right? Rather than just, oh, they're a researcher, oh, they do that, or oh, I'm my bio, right? Like that's, I'm so much bigger than that and different than that. That's not even half the things that I want to talk about, right? But it is who it makes, it makes part of you, right? And so I'm looking forward to getting to know a little bit more about the people that we're going to speak to and and, um, learning about their experiences, right? And and what learned lessons our audience can learn from them. Because like I, I learned so much by learning from others and honestly the things that they wish they wouldn't have done or the things that they think they should have done better um and that's like it's a great space for us to engage in that too i think yeah. they're kind of like the you know you brought this to conference the pti talks mm-hmm. you know i love always love those just because they allow people to you know get into somebody's life a little bit differently than just here's the research path that we took. And then it seems almost untouchable to a lot of folks. I think when people see that, um, you know, their journeys involve a lot of other very important parts of their lives, their families, their hobbies and things like that. I think that that also makes it really fun and interesting. At least I think so. Yeah. Great. Hey, Derek, do you want to tell, tell people a little bit about the hands off hands, hands on, Is, are we hands on, hands off or hands off, hands, hands, on, hands off, <laughs> hands on first. There's a reason. Okay. And then pull away. Yeah. All right. That, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> no, but I think it'd be good to tell people a little bit about what what's in a name. Yeah, no, that's a good <clears throat> well, gosh, we were going around 
and around and around about a name, weren't we, for this? And I think when we when we had the hands on hands off podcast, and when we were starting to talk about our name, we were talking about the strategic plan. I'm like, wait a minute, we're going to be saying the same thing. We're trying to do the same thing, and we're speaking in parallel. <clears throat> so why don't we just put all of the energy into one one direction? And so hands on hands off podcast really was was identified as a good name within the CMET because I think there's a lot of misinformation about manual therapy and it drives me crazy sometimes when you see things about the misinformation and it's a you know it's the type of manual therapy that we would all probably agree maybe is is not necessarily the most appropriate <clears throat> and so hands-on means that there is time that yes that it is necessary to put our hands on patients um mm -hmm. then there's also this component of manual therapy that you know we also don't need to put our hands on the patient to be effective. And, and I think that's one of the things, at least in my fellowship, when I talked through, talked to a lot of people who have gone through fellowship training is that one of the things that they learn through fellowship training is more about when to put your hands on and when yeah. to take your hands off. Right. And, yeah, and more yeah. often than not, you are taking your hands off, uh, but you're still using and you're, you're still effective with it. And so that's, I think the idea behind the name is, is that, manual therapists um, will put their hands on patients, but they will also spend a lot of their time, in fact, probably the majority of their time with their hands off of the patients, right? Doing all kinds of other things. And a part of that reasoning of going into when you put your hands on, when you take your hands off is part of the journey that we have all um, evolved in and, and have grown through, through our respective um, programs. And I think that that's something that we would all agree on. So I think that that hands on, hands off, podcast name was very intentional because we wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that there was times where we said, yes, it's appropriate for hands-on. And then there's also times when it's appropriate that it may not be for yeah. the time. And I like that. I think some of the misinformation out there is that we only do one thing, you know, or that we, we condone just, just this one intervention, which couldn't be further from the truth. So I, I love hearing you unpack that a little bit because I think, you know, we're also trying to um, just improve our, our branding or people's perception of what it is that we actually do. And a huge component of that is therapeutic alliance and shared decision-making, motivational interviewing, um, you know, all those other things that really are, are a hands-off component. So thanks for giving us a little bit more of an explanation of that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we've put that in those lineups too, right? How does that work in the building those relationships and, and person-centered care, patient-centered care? I mean, all yeah. of those components center around the patient. I mean, so, and sometimes patient preferences, right? I mean, if they think that that's something that's going to get them better and that's what they're looking for, then that's a great place to start. But then obviously use your reasoning and moving on. And I think the lineup helps us really kind of just convey the flexibility of a manual therapist who's gone through, especially for fellowship training, but it's not to say that fellowship training is the only thing. I just right. think it's, it's a style, right? It's the way that our organization feels that manual therapy, when done at the highest level, um, it really integrates all of the pyramid or all of the uh, stools of the, um, or all the legs of the stool in order to really integrate it for the best outcome for the patient. And I think yeah. that's really important. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well, you know, really, Derek is, is the one doing it. I'm just summarizing. And you already obviously hit it, too. So three. this is why we should just do all three together. So Derek needs to be pulled into these international 3 a.m. meetings as well. Like he's probably running a track somewhere chasing his stellar kids. I mean, that's probably what's really happening there. So. <laughs> no, no, I'm getting too old for those 3 a.m. runs. It's like that, that, that knee arthritis starts to kick in. I got to grease the skis a little before I get running. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Well, tell me this. What do we get to think about and uh, what's coming up in Orlando that you're most excited about for our own Ooh, yes. That's right? Mm. Like we're not that far away and Derek, things are opening up soon, right? Like, I mean, registration yeah. starting up. I mean, it's we over. should do a whole show just on that, but just give me a little snippet, a little snippet. What do you Actually, think is like the most exciting or what are you most excited about? Yeah. Well, obviously when this um, podcast gets um, released, it's, it's open. Registration is open. It's actually, you can go on the website and you can register. Um, so <clears throat> we are super excited. One, we're in 
a really cool location. We're in Orlando. We're in a really nice facility. The facility is exactly the type of facility that we want to be in. What I think AOMP does really well and in those, those kind of spaces where everybody is together. Like we're all in the same house together. And this is, it's a really nice um, space. You know, if you get a chance, book your room, the rate is amazing, you know, that kind of thing. So, so, so take time to come down. I think one of the things that I love about conferencing, especially because we're just, you know, we're pulling out now of, of a pandemic, we're all getting an opportunity to come back together. And it just shows and it proves how essential and how important it is for us to be together. And so having a space like we're going to have is going to be absolutely incredible. I've looked at pictures of it. It's, 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 it's top, top flight. And we actually just surveyed our membership. And one of the things that we realized is that location matters um, for our mm-hmm. conference. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the zip code actually does matter. Obviously the convenience of the airport. And so I think this checks a lot of those boxes. Beyond that, what we're super excited about is, um, you know, and I think the thing that I was most nervous about when I took over from the previous conference chair who set the bar incredibly high, and I'm just hoping I don't knock it off too hard, um, is the, uh, the obviously the, 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 the level of keynote presenters. And this year was and then Megan, I'm pretty sure that you always felt this where you start to get a little stressed out. Like, am I going to get, am I going to get, but we ended up getting three really, really good. Um, actually I should say four, but three, um, keynote presenters, um, you know, Jeremy Lewis, if you work anything with the shoulder, you know who Jeremy Lewis is. I mean, he is going to be somebody, I think that, and, and to be honest with you, we had him on our, um, hands on hands off podcast, um, which is how I ended up connecting with him to get him to come to conference mm-hmm. because I interviewed him for the podcast. I was like, this guy has to come to conference. Yeah. It's so inspiring, so motivating, such a, you know, such an incredible, and I, I think a very, he, he will be a lot of fun. He's going to be a lot of fun. People are going to really enjoy that hour, hour and a half of, 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 That's of awesome. his, his talk. The, um, uh, Nathan Hudding, he's a friend of ours um, within AOMP. He has come to AOMPS before. Uh, he's a huge supporter of what we do. He's a huge supporter of manual therapy on the international stage yep. and, you know, specifically to neck pain management. And so I'm super, you know, super thrilled that when we asked him if he would be, he was just like, <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> so, oh, I love that. Um, I love that. Happy to have him. And then, and then Sarah Piva, um, you know, obviously a very established researcher with um, UPMC. And she is interesting. She does a lot of work with me and NEOA right now, but she's kind of previous to me. She worked a lot with low back pain and now she's kind of moving back toward low back pain. But in our conversation, she was like, I was once a manual therapy fellow, but I let it lapse. And then we were like, no, wait, you don't have to worry about that because we don't have the 10 year rule. And so I think we're even able to bring her back in um, to the fold, but she comes with a, a, a surprising um, background in manual therapy. I didn't realize that when I started to reach out to her and then we started to have some conversations. So it goes to show how like AOMP can jumpstart so many people's careers into so many different directions. Yeah. yeah. She'll, she'll bring a lot into that. And then Roger Chow, I mean, yeah. this is going to be an incredible, um, you know, distinguished lecture. Uh, yeah. You couldn't ask for a better lecture. He's going to be our first non physical therapist as a uh, distinguished lecturer, but he is somebody who probably, if you look at the research line, a lot of the things that come back to conservative management for low back pain is, you know, probably one of, if not the most arguable um, persons who's really sort of shown how uh, we are, we're not doing a great job of managing low back pain from a, uh, from an, 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 an medicine and healthcare and health yeah. physical be a part of that solution. So I'm excited to hear what he brings into the, the table. I've actually had a chance to hear him once before um, speak. And uh, it was it was definitely a uh, uh, one of those crowd appealing events. It was it was exciting. Yeah. He's a really good speaker. So th- I think those are the exciting things. And then the last thing is, is we just finished reviewing the, um, you know, the proposals. And I was excited because you know, the majority of these proposals are, they're manual therapy. They're, people yeah. love to present about manual therapy. And we're going to have a lot of really uh, diverse uh, types of presentations that will go along with our um, keynote presenters. Everything from pelvic health, pediatrics, sports to, you know, the typical things that we would see with 
chronic pain management and, and so on. But the, the, the overall quality, we actually, we were saying on the other night when we were going through the conference proposals that this is hard because they were actually too good. So there was, there was not enough distinction in the scores. And so it was, it was a little bit of a challenge to get these, um, to figure out what was going to be best, which is a, which is a good challenge to have. Yeah. That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. That's great. And I, I love that we, you know, we're bringing in a keynote that's not a physical therapist. I think the outside perspective from other professionals is so important, you know, because they have a lens I think sometimes we don't know what we don't know because we talk to PTs, we engage with PTs, we, you know, we collaborate, we do research. And, and I think it's really cool to have someone, you know, who's, who's not a PT provide their perspective and their experiences. I mean, I'm really excited personally that he's coming. I've been reading his work ever since I kind of entered academics and I quote his stuff all the time. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I kind of feel like I have a little bit of like, I'm uh, star- she's, yeah, oh, I was going to say she's starstruck, Derek. She's All gonna, right. So like, Amy, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll reserve a the front row for you. I'll leave one there for you. We got to get her a shirt, Derek. We got to get her a shirt and that he can sign it for her. Oh, we have to do something. Oh, guys. Or, or we can, I can wear a bracelet. WWRCD. What would Ro- Robert Chow do? <laughs> Roger Chow. Oh, my gosh. You're giving all the listeners all these ideas now that they're going to have to tell us I what we're going to do. Yeah, that yeah. could be a fun competition. Whose idea do we take? I'm just saying, Derek, we, yeah. might, have to, we might have to explore this a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying bit. to figure out if we save Amy a seat in the front row or we actually don't have Oh, Derek, no. Row. Like, I, I don't know you and I are in the front row. Amy. Amy's going to be like trying to nudge up there. We'll be like, Is that the risk of embarrassment that you're trying to put me in the front row? <laughs> No. That's a real risk, just so you know. <laughs> right. yeah. I'm excited Roger Child's coming. I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. And, and uh, all the other, you know, people that you mentioned that are in the lineup, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I just have to say kudos to you, Derek, for putting the lineup together. Yeah. It is hard um, to, to put such top-notch people year in, year out. And, uh, you know, bringing that to the AM group is such a, it's a privilege, right? I, I always think it's such a privilege to have that opportunity to do that work, but it's also hard work. And Derek, you're really going out and getting those speakers. And so again, thank you so much for all your work you're doing there. It's, I mean, we really, our, our organization is for the people by the people. Like that's it. Like we're doing this work for our people, but AOMT is, uh, has just been such a, such a great organization to be a part of, um, from, from very, very long time ago. So I, mm-hmm. I love seeing that uh, people still have the passion to serve with such a big heart. So thanks Derek for that work. The other thing I'll say is, is that it's actually, it's, it's a little bit of an easier job than I thought it was going to be. I know that doesn't sound right, but in that, and I say that because AOM is a very respectable, yeah. company. it's a very respectable organization. And so when I reach out to people, they are, they want to be a part of that. They know who our membership is. They know our members are some of the, you know, not just the great researchers in education and, and, and educators, but they also know that they truly are like some of the best clinicians. You know, if you, if you think about this, like who would I send my, who would I send my mom to go get care for? And if I saw somebody that had, you know, some, background in manual therapy and such. Um, and so when we talk to folks that want to present, they know that they're presenting to an audience that is uh, has high standards. And I think mm-hmm. that makes it um, a, a bit of, an, of, of, a, of a nice role because I think people actually feel, um, you know, it is a privilege to stand up on the main That's stage right. and to present to this group of members, clinicians, other researchers and educators who have these standards of excellence that are, you know, quite high. Yeah. Well, I think we're also just, you know, it's a pretty fun group too, by the way. Uh, we have a party every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're pretty, they're pretty, pretty crazy people. We enjoy each yeah, other's they time. Are. We just got to watch Amy and Roger apparently though at the party. So <laughs> make sure that we'll give security a little bit of a key. Like, um, I make sure. It. I love it. Well, I, I mean, again, we have such awesome people who come to these conferences. So I always say it's, it is like a star uh, event, right? You get these rock stars in the profession who totally make time for other people, have conversations. So 
Amy, you can be the first to have that conversation with Roger and I'm sure it'll all work out great. And, <laughs> but we'll have others. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll distribute all the rock star, uh, the rock star dust around the room, make sure everyone gets to spread around. So that will be great. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Well, I think this is pretty good for our first kickoff. I mean, we hit our vision, what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We totally yeah. talked about how it aligns with what, you know, what we're trying to do as an organization. You gave him a little history about the naming, which by the way, not an easy thing. And thank goodness for Derek saving the day. Yeah. You know, now we're sitting here at a space where we get to talk about what our next steps are. We're going, we've got a lineup. We've got a huge lineup. Yeah. We're going international. Yeah. And some of those same people are going to be on the main stage with you, Derek, was we're kicking off big conference that we just talked about. So I think this is a pretty good wrap up for all the things that we've got going on that are going to come over the next five, six months. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Um, yes. Very excited to be a part of this. And, you know, and to our listeners, actually, just, uh, you know, when we said, hey, let's what's what's our first show that we should have? I'm like, just bring Megan and Amy on the show and let's just have a conversation because it'll, it'll be about the best thing. We didn't play around with any of the technology though, did we? We could have had all kinds of fun with some of the sound bites for our <laughs> listeners and things, but um, we'll, we'll do we'll more. Do another time. We'll do more. <laughs> you know, I can remove myself now. I can just go and just I let know. you know. I Irish goodbye, you all. So you know, you can, but I also have the same amount of control as you do. And I you can, can bring put me you right back, back on the stage. <laughs> I don't think we're going to showcase all of our inadequacies this early into the uh, into this endeavor. So. I agree with Amy <laughs> and Two Beasts One. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, team. It's great. I really appreciate you guys going and doing this with us. That's awesome. Sounds like that's a wrap.